Now, um, I would like to invite uh, our dear uh, Professor Ibrahim Dincher to make her keynote speech. Um, and about, yes. Yes. I think to talk uh, about <laughs> for hydrogen energy systems, renewable hydrogen energy systems for sustainable communities. The world floor is yours. You have 45 minutes, dear professor. Thank you, uh, Professor Uyar. I, I like to make one little correction, not her, him, him, or his, you know, and that little correction is necessary. Where, where what did I do? Did I do it? No, you said uh, her uh, lecture or presentation or no. something like that. So it shouldn't be her. Yeah, yeah. It has to be <laughs> his presentation. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best the next time. Thank you. You know, I <laughs> learn from mistakes. That's my basic quality. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. So, uh, <laughs> presumably, everybody is able to see my uh, slides. Yes. Excellent. Yes. So, uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you for your invitation. Today, uh, my talk is going to be about renewable hydrogen energy systems for sustainable communities. So really, uh, I will have uh, something really from A to Z. And uh, let's look at here first to see the dimensions of sustainability. And when we try to look at the dimensions, and I always introduce them by ease, and uh, here initially energy, education, economy, environment, and ethics. So these are really becoming uh, five key dimensions of sustainability. If one questions where is uh, about the uh, social dimension, and I make it very clear that it is really under this big shelter of ethics. So the uh, social dimension is uh, covered by. And then uh, we need to uh, get into uh, smart energy solutions. And Professor, we are mentioned about smart cities and smart cities uh, wouldn't be possible without smart energy solutions. Let's look at here what we have got today under this uh, smart energy solutions portfolio. Exergization, definitely, uh, which is going to be coming from the uh, thermodynamics, basically from the second law of thermodynamics, which is a tool for system design, analysis, assessment, and performance improvement. Greenization is going to be really essential. And this is to make the existing systems more environmentally benign. Renewableization, where we really uh, deploy renewable energy systems and uh, make the uh, systems in a way really fed by the renewables and accordingly covering the needs of the communities. And hydrogenization, and this is going to be really about uh, where we uh, incorporate hydrogen energy technologies into the uh, society wherever there is an opportunity. And then to look at the integration, Integration is becoming very essential, especially for renewable energy systems, and then targeting to achieve multi-generation. And the next is going to be really storageization, and that will bring uh, uh, storage technologies into, and really uh, to offset the mismatch between demand and supply. And then the next item is going to be really about intelligization. And uh, we uh, really need the uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools incorporated into energy uh, portfolio. <clears throat> so that's what makes the uh, smart energy portfolio. And then here, additionally, we have one more thing. What if we deal with any of these and then what critical uh, targets uh, are to consider. And then uh, these are going to be, of course, more specific to the systems and uh, better efficiency, better resources use, better cost effectiveness, better environment, better energy security, better management, 
and these are going to be essential to achieve better sustainability. So now we are uh, really uh, putting the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the pillars around and then uh, getting into. So when we look at the uh, history of fuels for the humanity, and uh, of course started with uh, wood, later uh, coal by industrial revolution, and then oil into the picture, and uh, more, of course, recently, natural gas has become the uh, main commodity. Now, what we see, we really need to achieve a carbon neutral, neutral uh, society, and really a carbon free economies, and that will require hydrogen. So the carbon hydrogen ratio has to go down, down to uh, zero, and this can only be achieved by uh, by hydrogen. So the key qu key question, and uh, what hydrogen can offer? Yes, hydrogen can be used as fuel or a energy carrier or a feedstock. But feedstock is going to be more critical. Without that particular feedstock, and uh, is not going to be possible to really uh, synthesize other fuels and uh, chemicals. So uh, now I mentioned we have been in a fossil fuels era and ended up with uh, lots of uh, cries. And now it is time to cure this uh, world. And that is essentially going to be done by hydrogen. And then the key now, we at the same time need to change our energy uh, diet. So we need to switch from uh, junky food, obviously from uh, <clears throat> fossil fuels, into the uh, renewables. So where we have renewable energy systems, obviously implementing renewable energy systems into the applications. Also the key question, what people need? Because we need to know what people need and then uh, get into the uh, solution. People need a uh, clean air, clean food, clean water, clean energy. If one doesn't have this clean enough, it will affect all of the above listed items. So food, air, and water will be greatly affected. So these are really essential and we shouldn't only think this way, you know, okay, is uh, really consider this, and these are essentially really uh, for the country. And if you think uh, big enough, these are going to be at the same time, essential commodities to achieve a country's sustainability. And I had the uh, article, you know, uh, written, this was uh, back in May, 2020. So uh, the whole point was during the pandemic, I uh, made this and really highlighting uh, the importance of, you know, this uh, COVID-19, which uh, offered a kind of turning point from carbon age into hydrogen age and really expedited, expedited, expedited the uh, activities around the globe and making uh, really uh, things and countries essentially going for hydrogen, green hydrogen uh, activities and projects. And also, uh, of course, uh, what we know, COVID-19 patients uh, essentially need uh, oxygen and uh, I uh, introduced this uh, concept that, you know, we have here, as long as we have water, not necessarily clean water, 
even uh, dirty water, we can uh, really uh, treat that and make it clean and use it in uh, electrolyzers or other hydrogen uh, production uh, methods or processes. So what we do, we have oxygen and we have a uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to be really feeding the uh, sectors and the oxygen can uh, be uh, stored and used accordingly for uh, treatment. And of course, its role is uh, very critical. And there was an article, by the way, by the uh, World uh, Health Organization saying that by 2030, every house will need an oxygen generator. Every house will need an oxygen generator. So keep it in mind. And then accordingly, there is, a, there is a, of course, a plan introduced by the United Nations with 17 goals, really under sustainable development. And these are known so-called sustainable development goals. Now the countries are trying to implement these and really achieve them as many as possible in various sectors of the country. Even in the educational area and the many institutions or universities are trying to consider these in their really courses, programs, or whatever teaching activities they have got. Obviously, as part of research, they are also critical. And then uh, looking at the uh, activities around the globe, Japan uh, started their uh, hydrogen energy ministerial uh, meetings and initially in 2018, later in 2019, 2020, 2021, and obviously going for 2022 this year. So when you look at the uh, really targets introduced back in 2019, and uh, this is by Japan, 10 million hydrogen powered systems and uh, 10,000 hydrogen refueling stations. So uh, really ambitious uh, targets and what this is what they are going to be achieving in 10 years. And then also, of course, uh, similarly various uh, countries looked at the, uh, of course, and uh, how they can manage this uh, transition. Transition, of course, initially having a kind of short-term uh, target and then long-term by uh, 20, uh, 2050. And then if you look at here and how many jobs they see, you know, and how well this is going to really equip the economy and the benefits to the uh, energy systems and how much, uh, of course, to be able to reduce the emissions, etc. So really uh, providing this, that kind of a uh, picture. And also uh, defining the uh, roadmap, you know, an immediate uh, approach 23, 20, uh, 25, up to 2030 and beyond 2030 and then how uh, this is going to be really uh, implemented. So really targeting the uh, actual sectors. Similarly, initially, of course, having, let's say, some immediate uh, small uh, devices and uh, vehicles, et cetera, especially these uh, fork leaves to be converted to run on uh, hydrogen and then ev eventually there will be, of course, more uh, getting into industries and then really diffusing into every single industrial application. And then also, of course, uh, several countries, they have been declaring, you know, uh, how much uh, is going to be really the, uh, the total amounts of the projects. And if you look at it, Hydrogen Council and uh, made an announcement that 
and there will be a projects really a, accounting for 500 billion dollars and uh, even now the numbers are uh, more than the trillion dollars and that's why uh, this was a kind of uh, last summer and almost 11 months uh, ago so when you look at it overall you see clearly what countries are trying to achieve so the economic value is going to be really enormous and uh, look at one initiative coming from uh, Canada in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. So this was a kind of a hydrogen initiative, obviously targeting clean energy ministerial. And they consider, you know, what uh, Japan uh, had uh, introduced, but this is something coming down to uh, really a clean energy ministerial. And this is a kind of a policy and uh, really introduce in every uh, minister and uh, really primarily using hydrogen and fuel cell technologies and to be able to achieve the clean energy transition in Vancouver and helping country to achieve the transition accordingly uh, countrywide. And then you see here uh, by uh, 2050, Canada wants to be a carbon neutral uh, or neutral uh, country. And uh, when you look at it, of course, there are certain uh, targets and uh, definitely uh, trying to use uh, blue and the uh, green type of hydrogen. Blue means, you know, still a continuing uh, steam methane based hydrogen production but incorporating uh, carbon capturing into. So that's why when you look at here and uh, in a way, and the prices are becoming very competitive in uh, Canada. And this is uh, one example. And uh, you see this is CCS, basically carbon capturing and storage. So uh, you see uh, green, uh, of course, green ones will be coming from renewables and uh, this uh, blue one with uh, carbon capturing. And accordingly, uh, there, there are multiple companies such as uh, Air Products trying to develop this technology, really being able to capture, look over here, up to 95%. And this is something uh, very important. And uh, really uh, look at here where they have, uh, of course, uh, Alberta's uh, natural gas getting into auto, uh, auto thermal uh, reactor. And then of course, ultimately uh, producing uh, hydrogen, but uh, capturing the CO2 and making it really carbon uh, neutral, uh, neutral process. So this is accordingly as blue hydrogen and uh, making it available to the uh, users. This was a, an, another important project and still the largest one, but there are, this is the largest one completed, but there are, even uh, larger ones, larger than these, but those are only announced and they haven't yet uh, finalized for production. And this particular one, 20 megawatt, uh, PEM using 20 megawatt, uh, of course, electric capacity and uh, targeting to use uh, PEM electrolyzers and uh, look at it uh, this way and uh, Previously, it was uh, in Japan, but now in Canada by uh, air liquid. You need to look at uh, some uh, oil companies to be able to understand the uh, energy equation and see how this is becoming, uh, of course, or evolving. And uh, when you look at here, this particular oil company and you see the prime target is really about the uh, renewables and the uh, hydrogen essentially. So no doubt, you know, this is their, uh, you know, prime action. 
And see here, another one, this is supposed to be uh, British Petroleum. Later, they changed their name into uh, Beyond the Petroleum. And what you see here, really prime focus, and this uh, with this uh, logo or uh, image uh, referring to renewables, and they have also hydrogen accordingly. So really, the prime targets are renewables and hydrogen. And of course, when you look at the uh, world's hydrogen production, and primarily you see uh, one thing, and uh, of course you see here, if you take this early 2020, only about 4% coming from electrolysis, the rest out of uh, fossil fuels. And by the way, this wasn't really fully uh, uh, green, and uh, of course here, uh, it has increased a little bit, not too much. And then other methods uh, were included into, and also uh, when you look at it, the green portion was only about uh, 1.07%. Uh, Still uh, really very small. And the target by uh, 2030 is going to be worldwide at least a uh, 10%. And this is uh, what the target is. And uh, accordingly, uh, really to make it uh, fully based on green by 2050. So the, uh, the outcome is going to be, and uh, one can make it uh, really clear that uh, renewables can uh, better survive with the uh, hydrogen uh, options. Let's look at here and uh, one, uh, if one looks at the uh, life cycle assessment of hydrogen production methods. So producing hydrogen out of uh, hydrocarbon fuels makes no sense. So what you see here, technically, you have nuclear uh, electricity or heat and then renewables to be used to disassociate water into hydrogen and oxygen. So becoming more environmentally benign. So the key question now, what should be the uh, direction? And the direction should be towards uh, this. And then uh, of course, this is uh, primarily in Europe, You know, when you look at the European uh, Commission, and uh, this is what they have, and uh, really uh, trying to, uh, of course, support the installa uh, ins installation of uh, at least six uh, gigawatt of renewable hydrogen electrolyzers in uh, Europe up to 2024 uh, and uh, up to uh, 2030 to bring it up to uh, at least 40 gigawatt. And then also, of course, when you look at here, in terms of uh, hydrogen production, 10, millions, 10 million tons of renewable hydrogen, which is green hydrogen. So uh, and anything uh, onward, and this is going to be, of course, applied or diffused into all uh, sectors. And also, of course, you can see the uh, drivers and indicators and uh, how this is going to be pushed. And the key is going to be, of course, uh, pushing to reduce the um, carbon emissions, reduce the uh, cost, and then also developing the nitro, uh, of course, national roadmaps, and also uh, really pushing the uh, sectors and making or developing the partnerships and implementing the uh, actual hydrogen production into, into the uh, societies. And then you can uh, see further here and uh, what they do in terms of, for example, uh, especially the investment made for uh, hydrogen production and in terms of uh, grants, in terms of investments, these are giving you an idea and uh, how much for uh, hydrogen uh, production, how much, uh, of course, for uh, infrastructure and storage, 
and how much for applications coming down to utilization. And there are, of course, uh, funding uh, available or grants available or subsidies, you know, really making them, uh, uh, making them uh, available for uh, people. And then also uh, we need to look at the uh, innovation dimension. Innovation dimension, and these are going to be, of course, multiple dimensions. And we have uh, five P's here, and people will be very critical in this dimension. And uh, of course, uh, people drive the innovation. And people with uh, no passion is not going to make any difference. So the passionate people will be very critical. Partnerships have to be developed. Policies have to be uh, uh, introduced, and then processes, uh, of course, uh, to be implemented. So when you look at this, really uh, what we have got five dimensions and to drive the uh, innovation, and which is going to be very critical in hydrogen uh, economy. And then I look at here, and this was a sort of a keynote talk first by me, and then later it turned it into a paper. And I had one of my graduate students helping me out, and really trying to uh, uh, trying to develop this approach by considering 18s from the uh, sector solutions, stakeholders, subsidy structure, strategy support, sustainability, stimulation, source system, service standards, scope, staff, scale up, safety scheme, et cetera. So making 18S and each of them is very critical. And then to look at this, you know, trying to make a kind of comparative evaluation and uh, having the uh, ratings or rankings between zero and one and this uh, green uh, one, which is going to be ideal. And we try to really uh, comparatively evaluate our technologies to be able to see where we uh, stand. And also uh, looking at the uh, country's uh, hydrogen related uh, research and development activities. And then you see here, uh, my home university, Ontario Tech uh, University is leading in this regard. And uh, really, and uh, primarily coming down to, of course, and the uh, renewables and nuclear and becoming really essential uh, part of this. Also, of course, to look at other uh, activities and in terms of hydrogen production, and we have been developing uh, thermochemical cycles, and these are becoming uh, very important and uh, multiple uh, projects and developments uh, have been achieved and using copper chlorine cycles to uh, magnesium chlorine cycles and even incorporating into the uh, solar energy system. And the key question, what drives these uh, processes? High temperature heat, and you see the temperature level is going up to 550 and essentially, and uh, achieving it in uh, three steps. Similarly, we can achieve in this uh, copper chlorine cycle in three, four, or uh, five uh, steps accordingly. And then this is a uh, sodium hydroxide and uh, another cycle, and uh, we have been uh, studying, and this is a bit uh, really, uh, uh, in a way, requiring uh, less uh, heat but uh, at the same time requiring uh, vacuum conditions that needs to be adjusted accordingly to be able to run the uh, process and uh, uh, produce hydrogen accordingly. So uh, looking at these, uh, basically what we see, energy and exergy efficiency is really going up to 80% in, in this kind of uh, sodium hydroxide uh, cycle. And of course, for solar, uh, you know, and also in a combined manner, how much is going to be and coming down to, let's say, around uh, 36 uh, percent and doing the analysis energetically and exergetically. 
And also cobalt, cobalt uh, chlorine was another cycle and we have been uh, studying and developing uh, further. And in this case, the temperature levels are uh, really going up to 700 degrees Celsius and achieving it at the uh, atmospheric pressure. And also developing here uh, integrated uh, heat pump options and to be able to upgrade the heat. And uh, you may ask the question, why heat upgrade is necessary? Uh, folks, this is uh, necessary because of the fact that in various applications where we have renewables, we may not be able to achieve the desired temperature level. If so, then uh, what is required and uh, we need to upgrade the heat or supply additional heat. So the key solution is to incorporate this kind of heat, heat pump and really solve the problem. And they're trying to study and see, you know, how much we can improve and they're really able to improve, increase the temperature up to 800 degrees Celsius. So we were really able to improve and of course, increase the temperature level in this particular case, the key question was how to incorporate, uh, you know, this cycle, copper chlorine cycle, into a solar heliostat field, and uh, trying to produce hydrogen and power, and uh, see how effectively we can do this uh, integration. And then according to here uh, to extend this, to be able to cover additional uh, subsystems where we have the uh, gasification and other thermochemical cycles producing uh, hydrogen in a combined manner and uh, blending with uh, natural gas and using it in various uh, systems. Photonic uh, hydrogen production is another uh, research domain for me. And uh, I have been uh, leading various uh, projects in the area. And this is one of our uh, books in the area, really about uh, sustainable hydrogen production, covering all these uh, processes and systems and uh, as well as applications. And they, of course, develop the reactors and processes accordingly from photoelectrolysis to uh, photoelectrochemical processes and to be able to even utilize waste waters and really turning them into hydrogen. And these are just some examples. I have uh, my, uh, actually I have a solar simulator and solarium in my uh, lab to be able to mimic the uh, actual solar conditions and test the uh, reactors at different wavelengths under different uh, conditions. And these are becoming very critical to look at the hydrogen production rates. And also of course, in uh, what the moles and the pressures, these are of course uh, studied nicely. And also further, of course, to look at the uh, photoelectrochemical reactors. And then this is something more recently uh, developed. Uh, and uh, one of my <clears throat> PhD students completed, and I have currently another PhD student working on even uh, different, uh, not this kind of dome type electrodes, even different uh, pyramid uh, type uh, elect or prismatic pyramid uh, type uh, electrodes and uh, configurations. And also high temperature electrolysis is another domain and we have been working on to develop these uh, cells and stacks. And that is another area. In Turkey, we uh, developed this uh, project and it was a kind of a joint one and I was the academic uh, lead and ultimately using uh, renewables, uh, wind, solar together to be able to, uh, of course, supply the uh, electricity needed to electrolyzer, produce hydrogen, and then of course, uh, you use it, blend it, uh, of course, first with natural gas, utilize, and then uh, use the unused por uh, portion, of course, in fuel cell, 
to uh, supply more uh, electricity and then you know making this kind of uh, arrangement and uh, this is uh, something uh, we have uh, built and tested in uh, konya karapuna and then also another domain which is very important uh, using uh, microwaves and uh, from uh, the uh, steam uh, form through the microwaves and producing hydrogen and completed a couple of uh, successful uh, projects. This is another one uh, using aluminum and water chemical reactions and develop these and uh, to be able to, of course, produce uh, hydrogen ultimately. And uh, of course, we have the overall reaction as seen here and managing it uh, nicely. And also, of course, developing a new technology to be able to recycle aluminum. And that is really amazing. And we are uh, filing the uh, patent. Another technology, a uh, mechanical, where we have the uh, sonic hydrogen production reactor and really using ultra, ultra uh, sonic or ultrasound uh, props. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, really wastewaters are treated by using ultrasonic uh, methods. But now having it treated nicely, brought into the uh, reactor for uh, hydrogen production, and then making it a kind of uh, in a cascaded manner. And then also at the same time, capturing CO2 and injin injecting it into the uh, reactor where we are able to improve the hydrogen production efficiency. And at the same time, enhance the production uh, rate. And these are uh, just some examples related to uh, integrated systems, developing them uh, for the uh, communities in uh, Canada. And this is one uh, indigenous community, Nunavut territory, and developing these systems. And basically by uh, doing it uh, through the renewables, and you see here trying to cover the, the actually the other needs, from uh, let's say uh, food to uh, water, electricity, hydrogen, et cetera, really making it uh, very specific. And at the same time, addressing the uh, United Nations uh, goals. This is another one uh, for an island uh, community and making it a kind of energy island and trying to cover the uh, needs. And this was also another interesting uh, project. And developing a hydrogen hub in Oshawa and uh, targeting to use uh, nuclear and the uh, renewables together uh, to be able to produce hydrogen by using the systems developed in my uh, lab and accordingly achieving it, you know, for uh, various sectors, including this uh, transportation sector under different scenarios and targeting the use, uh, let's say, clean energy research laboratory, really is serving, uh, serving uh, the community. Different scenarios to uh, consider, to be able to compare them. And uh, really, uh, you see here, these are becoming more meaningful. And uh, in terms of uh, cost, and the uh, battery electric, fuel cell electric, fuel cell now is becoming uh, much cheaper. Of course, diesel uh, and compressed uh, natural gas is not, of course, any more feasible. And then another one is, uh, this is something, uh, my uh, final portion to be able to look at here. And I have been uh, really advocating for hydrogen farm concept where we have the uh, renewable energy is utilized to produce hydrogen and where we can, uh, of course, deploy hydrogen production uh, methods under the systems and uh, make uh, green hydrogen. And study the uh, cities, 81 cities in Turkey to look at the hydrogen production rate. And then you see here top 10 uh, cities and the hydrogen production after really uh, supplying all what is needed by every city and using the remaining uh, energies in terms of electricity and heat and making it uh, for hydrogen production and producing uh, nearly 615 million tons of hydrogen annually. 
And then also, of course, another domain is going to be renewable uh, fuels. When you have, uh, of course, hydrogen, what you can do, you can uh, produce ammonia, methane, methanol, ethanol, DME, etc. So really uh, making it uh, available to other uh, sectors and applications. Now this is going to be the uh, dimension. Renewable methane and natural gas production. And uh, I have a PhD student working on it. And this is very important, developing the technology. This is something very unique and we are still working on it. And we have uh, done uh, one on methanol. This is renewable methanol. This was very interesting to uh, by capturing the ocean uh, CO2 and utilizing it in the uh, electrolytic cation exchange membrane and the reactor <clears throat> and the, of course producing hydrogen and synthesized into into methanol and also another uh, dme dimethyl ether uh, <clears throat> using of course uh, solar hydrogen capturing co2 and making it accordingly uh, DME. So uh, there are various options. As you see here, uh, these systems have been uh, developed. Technology is now under uh, consideration. So finally, what I'm saying here, it is very important to uh, initiate the uh, hydrogen economy with hydrogen energy uh, solutions. Even now worldwide, uh, there is a movement where uh, hydrogen drinks are becoming very important rather than uh, carbonated, uh, high, uh, carbonated drinks. Now uh, healthier hydrogenated uh, drinks and the hydrogenated uh, water is one of them. So the final, uh, of course, slide with the uh, closing remarks and uh, we need the smart energy solutions. These are necessary for achieving uh, sustainable development. Innovation is going to be really needed in every uh, step and renewables will be uh, prime uh, sources and the uh, hydrogen, uh, of course, which is going to be used as fuel energy carrier and the uh, feedstock. And we need to also move into renewable fuels and what else? So there may be many more achievements coming into, and of course, new things we are not even aware of. And then of course, we have hydrogen show coming soon in Istanbul. This is the World Hydrogen Energy Conference. And I encourage you to participate. And Mr. Chair, that's all from my side. I hope I have made it uh, timely and it is, uh, I completed in 43 minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Professor. As usual, you are very punctual and um, everybody should take you as an example in that sense. Thank you very much. And um, we have really made a very good overview of renewable hydrogen. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your participation. It's a pleasure for us as the uh, to have the leader of hydrogen technology development in a, in uh, Irene conferences. Your valuable contributions are appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.